There's few destination countries, which means people will travel from abroad to go to a destination country to have sex with kids. And the US is a top destination country. Talk about something that it's um, the passion that the biggest passion that you have, which mm -hmm. is um, your humanitarian efforts mm -hmm. to handle human trafficking. Mm. And um, I always had the goal, like I want to meet Marisol because what she's doing is incredible, Thank and you. it takes courage and it takes a lot of like passion, right? Mm -hmm. So to put yourself in that position, so why don't you tell the audience like what is the current situation with this? Sure. Because here's the thing people don't really understand because we live in this freaking bubble. Yeah. And especially people that are watching this show, we have the ability to help and create an impact. We really mm -hmm. do, right? So yeah. how do we get these people to get more involved with what you're doing, mm -hmm. what you're up to? Because Thank I you. know that this is more important to you than your acting career, yeah, right? Yeah, completely. Up, it course. makes sense, yeah. right? So why don't you tell them a little bit about this yourself? Sure. So, okay. So when I first started this and started hearing about it back in 2012, 2013, I think the numbers of people caught up in human trafficking in the world was about 20 million, right? Now, it's 45 million. Exponentially How growing. Exponentially growing. Now, the thing about trafficking is that it operates in the shadows. So no one, it's not like, you know, people are taking surveys, right? And when people think of human trafficking, they think of particularly sex trafficking, which was one part of human trafficking, which is sort of the part that I concentrate the most on, child sex trafficking. Um, they think, they go, oh, those poor girls, you know, in Poland, or unfortunately, Mexico, or Cambodia, or the Philippines, and they have no idea that it's in their own state, it's in their own country, and it's in their own backyard. It's in every single state in America. Every single state. Every wow. single state, every single major city. Here, every, every single small city. Well, isn't it U.S. the number one consumer of, of child pornography oh, you've been watching. in yes. the world, right? So the U.S. is the number one producer distributor and consumer of pornography in the world and child pornography, period. And then the industry itself, human trafficking, which I heard it was 150 billion, is that right? Billion dollar industry. Billion dollar industry, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So 150 billion dollar industry, yes. right? So that industry is also a big part of that is happening here in this own oh, yeah. country that we 100%. live in. hundred percent. Right? I mean, you, the United States is now a destination country which means um, there's few destination countries, which means people will travel from abroad to go to a destination country to have sex with kids. And the US is a top destination country. Crazy. Which when people hear about it, they're like, wait, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Because the social veneer that's out there, you don't know. So you've no idea. Most, most good people don't know about this. And that's the problem. Because all the bad guys know all about it. You know, uh, one of the first ops I did, we put an ad in Craigslist. I've talked about this before um, in other, and on my own podcast I and with saw, Tam. I saw, the, I saw what you guys were talking about. Exactly. So we got 60 applications in 15 minutes. In 15 minutes. Something like that before Craigslist in took it down. In a small friggin' town. Very small town in California. Because Craigslist uh, flags Craigslist it and will take it down. Yeah, so Craigslist had filters at right. least. Um, some of these other sites do not have filters, but Craigslist had filters. So we had to put this ad out um, coded. But how crazy that in 15 minutes, yeah, in 15 minutes, 60 pedophiles or 60 100%. perverts. 100%. Just, hey, I want this. Absolutely. You got a nine year old? 100%. Where do I go? Nine year old and 12 year old. In a hundred, like, like that. And that was back in 2014, 2015. So now, with all the numbers that have doubled and tripled since then, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So how does that how does that journey start for these kids? Because is it is it coming from an orphanage? Is it because it depends where? Or is so it a parent that's like, hey, I don't want you. Here it, you go. It's all of the above. So um, it just depends if it's in a foreign country and it's a kid. Sometimes it's uh, parents that are selling their kids under the guise of, oh, I'm giving my kid a better life. Trafficker comes. Oh, we have a school that we want to send your kid to. I mean, there was. It's like they have a recruitment office. A hundred percent. And these guys are smart so once they get the kid it's gone then the kid's gone and that's it and that's, I would imagine that's their life parents are like drug addicts and they're looking for like a or way just out. poor or just poverty period this is or all, they think unreal. they're giving their kid another life i mean you're a mom a better of, life of a beautiful girl you have rain i got four kids it's so unreal i would die for my kids of course right so it's of course to think about a parent just being willing to like commit their kid even if they well feel again better, some of these some of these parents don't know what they're doing some of these parents think they're sending their kid off to a school 
or off to a better life. And they've been fooled by the traffickers and they're low income. They haven't gone to school themselves. So they can't really see the out points and that this may not be legitimate. And these kids right? are young enough that they don't really have access to their phones and they don't really have... They no, don't, these are kids. They don't know their phone numbers or their parents. So it's like basically once they take them off, it's all They're gone. They're gone. Right? So that's that scenario. Okay. And then in America, what does it look like? Well, in America, it's foster care children. It's foster care children and runaways. And the I, I hate to say it, but the term that has been used over the last 15 years, they're called throwaway kids. Wow. Because no one's looking for them. There's no parents out there looking for them. And it's just, and it's, it's horrific. But, you know, when people think of trafficking in America, they think of other kids being brought here. They think of, oh, you know, girls are being brought from Poland or the Ukraine. It's like, no, 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 no. Or South America. No, it's supply and demand. We've got the supply right here in America, and we've got the demand right here in America. There's truly no need to bring girls from another country over here because we have more than enough here. It does happen, but it's not common because it's all right here. Lot, plenty of times right. we'll take girls from here and export them to other countries. That happens. But in America, it's, it's all here. Right. It's right here under our noses. So how do we, how do we start bringing these numbers down? So what is the So the, the first and foremost, for, unfortunately, it's always going to be awareness. Because of good, like I've said this a thousand times, but if, if good people don't know about this, it's never going to change. It's never going to change, period. You have to have enough of an uproar. And the only people that are going to give an uproar about kids being trafficked for sex are good people, our parents, our teachers, our, you know, well-meaning, sane adults, because all the bad guys know about it. So it starts with awareness. We just got to keep pushing. We just got to get more people to join the cause. That's right. We just got to get more people to join the fight. And That's push. right. That's the way it is. Exactly. So Marisol, as we're wrapping up, because we can yes. talk about this for hours and hours and hours. Yep. How can people watching this that are getting inspired by it? How so, can they join? you know, I would ask everyone to please, if you can, search for the Marisol Nichols podcast. We're on Spotify and Apple and iHeartRadio and everywhere that podcasts are sold. And on YouTube, you can actually watch it. Um, it's visual. And if you can't find it, just go to MarisolNichols.com and there's a link there. And we not only have experts on that share everything, and you, but you also get a behind the scenes look on what this actually looks like. Um, so spreading awareness obviously is key. Please go to ideally my website, slaveryfreeworld.org. Slaveryfreeworld.org. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put this on the links. Yes, also. please. Mm -hmm. And, and any kind of support you can give, even if it's $10 a month, we'll take it. So amazing. Marisol, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. We're going to help spread the word like crazy. Thank I'm you. sure that, um, our audience is going to want to participate and be a part of this hashtag join the fight. Yes, please. Let's keep on fighting. Let's keep on making a change because here's the thing. We don't realize it, but we can really make a difference if we act.